Well, thanks everyone for joining us today at the 25th anniversary celebration of the Meadville Area Free Clinic. I'm Dwayne Kohler and I'm one of the founders. We'll talk about that later. But initially we have a speaker for you, Dr. Denise Johnson, who is the official acting secretary of the Department of Health of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And she's the former board chairman of the Free Clinic. So Dr. Johnson, thank you for being with us here today. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Wow, this is a great big crowd here. It's so nice to see everyone. Um, so I'm Dr. Denise Johnson, and I'm serving now in the role of Acting Secretary and Physician General at the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Um, it is so good to be back here in Meadville, and um, I'm so honored to be invited by you to join in for the 25th anniversary of the Free Clinic. Let's give another hand for 25 years. So thank you so much for inviting me, Dr. Kennedy, um, Dr. Miles, Dwayne Kohler, Dave Schaefer, Diane Craven, all of the volunteers. I'm really glad to have this invitation to be here. So I officially moved to Harrisburg this year and that's been really bittersweet. I spent 25 years here in Meadville, so since uh, the free clinic was founded, I was here in Meadville, and so really uh, hard to be away. Meadville has definitely got a special place in my heart. Meadville was my first practice um, when I got out of residency in OBGYN, and I lived here in Meadville um, at least five times longer than I lived anywhere in my whole life. <laughs> And I got to know many of you here in Meadville. And as you all know, Meadville is an outstanding town. Uh, Meadville has outstanding people because you really take care of each other. That's evidenced by what we see here today. When we first moved to Meadville and we moved into our house, um, we had neighbors that came by and brought us gifts and said, welcome, and we thought, I thought that only happened on TV. It was really amazing, the welcome that we got when we got here. I remember once um, when I was in my practice, soon after I got here, uh, my uh, letter carrier from my house um, came to my office um, with a package and um, he said, well, I wasn't sure what time you would get home and I didn't want to just leave this outside. <laughs> I mean, how amazing is that? Just amazing sense of community. A couple of years after we moved here, there was a huge storm that came into town. We had a lot of trees that were down all over the neighborhood. We lost six trees in that storm. And one of the trees um, fell onto our roof and put a hole in the roof right over our bedroom. We were out of town, we were at a family reunion, and our neighbors came over, put a tarp over the hole in the roof and called my partner to let them know what happened. I mean, how amazing is that? What a community to live in. Really, really bittersweet not to uh, be in that community anymore. So, those are just a couple of memories that um, illustrate what a fantastic, kind, compassionate, caring community that you have here. Um, the generosity of uh, Mead Villians. Is that really a word? I don't know what, uh, what they're called. So all of us have spent the past two plus years um, undergoing, uh, experiencing an unbelievable time that um, no one could even fathom. I think no one could even imagine a fraction of the impacts that we've experienced over the past two and a half years. Worldwide, uh, more than half a billion cases of COVID. Uh, that's B, billion with a B. More than six million people have died. And even just in the United States, we've had over a million deaths. No one could have predicted that we would have that. Pandemics have the ability to impact all populations, but people who are already vulnerable, people who have already um, been uh, marginalized, have bear the worst uh, of that impact. And the COVID pandemic has really shown, put a bright light on those disparities that are within our healthcare system. I think all of you would agree that we always had those uh, disparities, but they were really magnified by the pandemic. And we really need to make sure that we make systemic changes to uh, address those disparities and make sure that we set ourselves up for not 
having that again in the future. But the inclusive nature um, has always been a defining feature of the free clinic. In fact, I think it was back in somewhere 1995, 1996, that local citizens of Meadville realized that there were many uh, among us who could not afford health insurance. I think all of you know health insurance is really expensive and it can be out of reach for some. Unless you have a job that offers you health insurance or you um, are at a certain income level where you can qualify for government assistance, you may not be able to afford any health insurance. Those who have been volunteering in the clinic know that there are many of our community members who are working, and working sometimes more than one job, who can't afford health insurance. They don't have money to go to the doctor. Um, they can't be diagnosed with uh, high blood pressure and then get treated for high blood pressure uh, to avoid the consequences of untreated high blood pressure, like stroke or heart attack. We also know that um, there are many individuals that are choosing between healthcare needs and basic necessities. Basic necessities like food or shelter, and they're having to make that choice. Access to healthcare that you need should be a right, not a privilege. And it shouldn't depend on your income, where you live, your race, your social or economic status, your education, or anything else. And we have to make it a priority to ensure that every individual who needs health insurance has access to it. So back in 1995, 1996, when it was projected that at least 10% of Pennsylvanians would be without health insurance, Dwayne Kohler, Dr. Kirkpatrick, other committed volunteers believed that healthcare was a human right and they decided to do something about it. And thus, we have the Meadville Area Free Clinic. So Dwayne was there from the beginning and he is still serving on the Free Clinic. Um, he has had every role imaginable, many of them without names. <laughs> he was willing to do anything that the clinic needed uh, to make it a success. Thanks, Duane. So since the founding, these services have depended on volunteers. Uh, the medical care, the clerical work, board of directors, all local community members giving of their time, their talent, and their treasure to provide for their neighbors who didn't have the privilege of health insurance. Volunteers generously donate hundreds of hours to provide chronic disease management and treatment for medical problems. They manage high blood pressure, diabetes, infection, wounds, and many other conditions. And they've partnered with other community businesses and organizations to provide lab tests, medications, eyeglasses, gym memberships, and other needs. The free clinic has withstood many changes and growth over the years, changing locations, um, changing to larger space, different upgrades, and your success has garnered uh, support from organizations like the United Way and um, a large grant from Highmark Foundation. Thank you for that. Um, it's really been impressive to see the tangible successes um, which really impact our community. So the medical care now is under direction of uh, Dr. Amy Miles. Uh, I saw Dr. Miles earlier. Um, Dr. Miles has um, been really able to coordinate a group of really committed practitioners to provide the medical care, and she herself provides a lot of the medical care and the oversight. We have uh, local physicians, nurse practitioners, f physician assistants, nurses, and others. And over the years, many of our colleagues have come to provide free care in, for our community in the clinic. So your current board chair, Dr. Bev Kennedy, um, really amazing, was a volunteer for quite a while, but she's really championed a lot of the notable uh, accomplishments. Um, the collaboration with the Dispensary of Hope was phenomenal, and it's provided free access to medications for our community members. A lot of medications that we had difficulty getting or paying for at the free clinic, and um, it really has been a model, even for the, the Dispensary of Hope, in how um, effective and well-run our program was, and, and they've really featured that program as well. 
Um, I think you know that uh, um, Bev is really passionate about uh, uh, diabetes care and um, so she started diabetes clinics there um, and have really impacted the outcomes for the diabetic patients um, in the clinic and I hear that there are more advances uh, going on as well. We have had many nurses, uh, assistants, receptionists, secretaries and students over the years that um, showed that the clinic could run a really lean operation based on their generosity. Um, thank you, Dave Schaefer, um, who was the chief nursing executive at uh, Meadville Medical Center for quite a while, but retired and decided to come. Uh, I think he didn't realize it would be full time at the free clinic uh, after he retired. But if any of you know Dave, um, he really brought a level of organization and professionalism to our to the volunteer clinic and really made uh, really upped our game uh, quite a bit. Thank you to all of the board members um, who have served over the past years, and I'm proud to have been one. We've had many community members representing all sectors of the community, including healthcare, businesses, education, who've participated in the vision, oversight, and leadership of the clinic. Um, I'd be remiss, uh, I, there are plenty of people I didn't mention by name, but have to mention Diane Craven. I think um, all of you can see her handiwork on this event here. Um, the clinic was very fortunate to um, snag Diane, who had all this experience in nonprofits, but also had really tight community connections and um, was really able to leverage that to advance the clinic. Um, Diane has done such a tremendous job, and I think that seeing all of this out here, um, I certainly know that <laughs> Diane orchestrated it, and certainly not by herself. Um, uh, there are such a team of dedicated volunteers at the free clinic um, that really are willing to pitch in for everything. So all of you have been part of the success of the free clinic as well. Hundreds of community uh, members, probably thousands, give monetary donations. And the clinic operates solely on gifts from individuals, businesses, and foundations. And after all of these years, the services of, of the free clinic are still just that. They're free um, because of the gener generosity of all of you. So the board members, clinic volunteers, physicians, providers, nurses, all do that without any compensation. And now as Acting Secretary of Health, I continue to applaud your commitment to increasing equity in healthcare. We know that there's a lot more that needs to be done um, to impact the health of Pennsylvanians, but we all are up to the challenge. And I know that with your help, we can make a significant impact. Thank you, Meadville, Med Meadville Area Free Clinic, for what you continue to do to help us to create a healthy Pennsylvania for all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now, according to the schedule, Breathe in Yoga, Tara DeArmond is next. Where's Tara? Tara Diarmid um, from Breathe and Yoga. Uh, I don't know if anybody's listening, <laughs> but I <laughs> I own the yoga studio up on Conneaut Lake Road, and <laughs> I was born and raised in Meadville, and I think more than ever right now, what we need is probably a little more yoga in our life so <laughs> all right um, because of COVID our anxiety levels have risen quite a bit yeah <laughs> um, so one thing yoga teaches us is how to breathe how to calm ourselves down <laughs> It teaches us movement. Um, <laughs> feeling a little thrown off right now because of every all of the chaos. But um, sorry, <laughs> I'm frozen for a moment. When we move, we can find our breath. We can find our strength. And if you are listening to me right now, I'd like you to bring your awareness to your breath. So, 
take a nice deep breath in. And then maybe slightly part your lips and let the breath go. Breathe in. And exhale, let the breath go. So um, I don't know if I want to speak into this microphone anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> I myself have uh, experienced a lot of different things in my life. And I found yoga when I was 16 because I had migraines. And yoga helps with headaches. Um, it helped with scoliosis. I was diagnosed with scoliosis and I wanted to find alignment. And it helped to give me alignment and find strength in my back. And then I kind of drifted away from yoga as I got older. But then in my 30s, I kind of came back around and I started practicing again. Um, I struggled with uh, past abusive relationship and um, I also struggled a little bit with addiction. When I started to change my lifestyle and build a better foundation, that's when yoga came into play. I did therapy too. You know, yoga isn't our therapist. It's not a doctor, but it's going to be a tool that we can use to live a better life. And um, you could do a lot of physical movement with yoga. Uh, you could come take a class with me. <laughs> um, but you also can do yoga at home on your own. You can do it for free. There's a lot of different resources out there, especially because of COVID. YouTube has a plethora. I, I shouldn't, you know, tell people about that, but YouTube has a plethora of different options uh, that you can find. Yoga with Adrian, <laughs> and there are def definitely a lot of resources for meditation as well. So meditation can be done seated, it can be done standing, and um, you just want to breathe in and acknowledge your surroundings. <laughs> so meditation can also be moving such as in yoga and um, <laughs> I had a whole thing all planned out so it can help to calm you and uh, <laughs> When you meditate, you want to try to find a quiet space. And even if it's not quiet, <laughs> you just find yourself in your surroundings. Acknowledge you know, your five senses, what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're hearing, what you're tasting, what you're smelling. And that'll bring you into the moment and help to bring you into meditation. You can close the eyes, you can ohm if you want, but you don't need to. Just being in the moment um, <laughs> will help to calm you down. I'd like to thank you guys for having me here. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it short, thank you so much. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can visit me over at my table. I have some free samples and information on classes. Thank you. <laughs>So Meadville Medical Center was formed in 1986 with the history of Spencer Hospital and City Hospital. Spencer Hospital being the second oldest hospital in the country east of the Allegheny Mountains. Only the only one older is West Penn in, in Pittsburgh. Um, I don't know if anybody ever heard the story of, of, of that, how Spencer Hospital got founded. But there was a train accident. Well, of course, Meadville, Meadville was the center for train yards coming through. And there was a train accident in, 80, in 1869, I think it was. And the people who were uh, injured on the train accident were brought on carts, like wheelbarrows, were brought to the, the, the 
the Spencer, which wasn't a hospital at the time, it was a um, uh, it was an orphanage. And the sister, can you help us? And she's like, we're an orphanage. How are we going to help you? She's like, we got nowhere else to go, sister. Can you help us? So that was the founding of Spencer Hospital. And Sister Spencer didn't live too much longer after that, but that was the the first hospital, well, second hospital, second behind West Penn. Um, Meadville City Hospital was founded about 10 years after that. Um, they were going in different directions, and and like I said, back in back in the 80s, they were they they got together and and formed the Meadville Medical. Center and for the first so six or eight years there was a whole bunch of organizing about what was going to be in what building and what was going to be in what building and whatever as that stuff all got worked out um, a lot of folks were coming to the emergency room with uh, like a crisis that didn't really need to happen they were not being they were not being taken care of ahead of time that could have prevented them coming to the emergency room and that was coming up a lot so I went with our CEO Tony DeFail um, and a couple of our other administrators we went to a session that was put on by the American Hospital Association back in I think it was in 92 or 93 and it was in Hilton Head and, and we went to Hilton Head for for that for a, a meeting about what's a free clinic and th that was where one of the free clinics that that was kind of famous around the country that's where it was there so we went to tour the free clinic there it was very interesting so it's like well that would be a good way to, to get folks to not end up coming to the emergency room, uh, but to get preventative care and, and to, to get them taken care of. We had a fair number of folks at the time um, who worked the night shift at Kmart and they were stocking the shelves when they didn't have health insurance. Folks with a low income were covered by Medicaid. Folks over 65 were covered by Medicare. Um, now, another interesting thing that, that came along was there were like, okay, husband retired and wife was only 62. And so what are we going to do for her for three years? Because she wasn't eligible for Medicare care until she turned 65. Um, so there was all, all kinds of like little things just often, we're not talking about thousands of people, we're talking about a little thing here, a little thing over there. Um, but, the, but the big thing was folks not getting preventative care coming to the emergency room for a crisis. And it's like, let's see what we can do to avoid the crisis. So Dr. David Kirkpatrick, myself, and then Mayor Tony Petruso, we were the three founders of the free clinic. Um, the, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of legal stuff you had to go through to, to set up a, a, a nonprofit corporation. And, and that's, we don't have to go through all that kind of stuff. But that's, but we were the ones signing all the papers and doing, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, we had a bunch of other volunteer doctors at the time, Dr. Nesbitt, um, Dr. Robert Moyers, and, and since since then, um, things the free clinic has continued on. No patient has ever been charged a penny. Um, we appreciate all the donations that have come through to keep the free, the free clinic operating. United Way has supported from the very start. Uh, Highmark has been a great supporter. A number of foundations, a number of churches in the area, a number of individuals in the area have supported the free clinic. And and those things, no patient has ever been charged a penny. You know, I, I'm very proud to say that, and that's 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 continuing on forever here. Um, so. Dr. Miles, did you want to come up and give a little talk here? Dr. Amy Miles is our current medical director, and and she uh, she knows inside and outside. So, Dr. Amy Miles, would you would you mind coming up, please? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming very much, taking time out of your afternoon, coming and joining with the organizations here, uh, getting the information about the resources in the community. I really appreciate people coming out this afternoon and spending your time with us. So like Dwayne said, I'm Dr. Amy Miles, and I'm honored to be speaking with you today to let you know about the Meadville Area Free Clinic and how it currently functions. First, I'd like to start off with an old quote. Okay, back in 1944, Harold Samuel, a British realtor, he coined a phrase that we all recognize today. It's regarding awareness of facilities. You can probably say it with me, location, location, location. Indeed, that is the first matter I would like to let everybody here know about, the Meadville Area Free Clinic's location, which is 505 Poplar Street, Suite 206 in Meadville. This is Meadville Medical Center's Poplar Street Medical Arts Building, and it's adjacent to Meadville Medical Center's Grove Street Campus. And actually, like Dwayne was starting to mention, I have in here that some of you may even know it as Spencer Hospital. This area contains the offices of Dr. Peter White, Dr. Peter Pless, those doctors, some of which you may be familiar with. We are on the second floor of that building, 
and we've been there since October of 2017 when we relocated from Chestnut Street. So the Meadville Area Free Clinic currently serves about 120 active patients right now. And that looks like 40 to 50 appointments each month. We serve as those patients' primary care team. So we're not an urgent care, we're not a walk-in clinic, we're certainly not an emergency department. We're their primary care team. And we treat them for time-sensitive concerns, so like what we call acute problems, so like colds, flus, viruses, UTIs, things like that. So time-sensitive concerns, procedures, and we also manage any ongoing and long-standing medical problems that these patients have. We have one part-time paid employee. The rest of us are all volunteer, just like Dr. Johnson mentioned in her talk. We have volunteer physicians, volunteer nurse practitioners, volunteer nurses, vo volunteer physical therapist, volunteer pharmacist, and vo volunteer clerical staff. Patients are seen on an appointment basis. Like I said, we're not a walk-in clinic. Patients are seen on an appointment basis based off of the ability and the availability of the volunteer medical staff. So when we have time away from our paid jobs to volunteer, that's when our office manager sets them up to see us. We have partnerships with multiple community agencies to help coordinate care for our patients on a free or cost-effective basis. Many of them are listed here on the back of your program. And we are immensely grateful to them for their partnerships. Thank you guys, all of you, for coming out today and part, uh, being able to demonstrate how you service the community. The Meet Valeria Free Clinic was created to be a medical organization for low-income, working, uninsured people. Individuals, thankfully, these days have a variety of options for healthcare coverage to include CHIP, Medicare, medical assistance, veterans benefits, and the Penny program, as well as, of course, traditional employee coverage. But the unfortunate reality is that there is a subset of people, like Dwayne was mentioning, who don't meet criteria for any of these programs. And these are the people that we at Mead Valeria Free Clinic are very happy to serve. As we serve and continue to do so into the future, we welcome volunteers of any challenge or skill set. If you're not medical, it doesn't mean you can't help. We can always use assistance with organizing, uh, phone calls, shopping, errand running, and clerical needs. Of course, if you are medically trained, we would love your help too. If you are called to this area of need, even if you don't work in primary care, we have medical volunteers from many backgrounds, cardiology, emergency medicine, wilderness medicine, urology, dermatology, lactation medicine, urgent care, ears, nose, and throat medicine, surgery, wound care, addiction medicine, and OBGYN. Physicians and nurse practitioners have volunteered from those fields in the past. A lot of them say it helps keep their primary care skills sharp. All volunteers, past and current, agree that volunteering in this medical arena is extremely rewarding. In conclusion, I am thrilled to be with everyone here today, celebrating Mead Valeria Free Clinic's 25th anniversary. Here's to 25 years and many, many more. Thanks, Dr. Miles. Bev, would you like to would you like to come up and talk? Bev Kennedy's up next. She's our board chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for so much for coming. Um, I just wanted to introduce our board members first of the free clinic. All our volunteer board members. Um, myself is the as chairperson. Dwayne Kohler is the secretary treasurer. Dr. Amy Miles is our medical director for the clinic. Um, David Schaefer is our director of nursing. Um, Lisa Cox, oh, there you are, Lisa. Um, Annette Gulick is somewhere. Um, Brian Hasenkoff, Dr. Kevin Kraling from the hospital. Joyce Ladner. She's in the corner there. Um, Cora Mazina is somewhere too. 
Jennifer Patton Rudolph. Thank you so much for everything. And then Debbie Pip, she was a, one of our CPAs. And Diane Craven serves as our office manager. I wanted to take the time also to recognize our volunteers. We have many. Um, many hands make little work. Do you want to come up here, Diane, too, and help with the, I'm going to name off the names of all of our volunteers. Um, Thank you, Diane. So, it's somewhat in alphabetical order, but not always, uh, it's not always. Uh, let's see, Wilna Bass, Michael Bizarro, Jane Bradshaw, Carol Kuhn, Diane Craven, Dan Craven. Go ahead. Who's one of our physical therapists. And then we have Madeline Davis, Debbie Dewey, Tina Garver, Jackie Gilday, Susan Hemlock, who's also one of our physical therapists, Cheryl Hodges, who's one of our nurses, Bev Kantz, Barb Laterer, Joyce Sladner, Maggie McMonigal, who's also one of our physical therapists, Jean Matillo, Becky Myers, Autumn Peterson, who is our summer intern for the summer, who's been working with our hypertension, diabetic, and our mental health program, who's been doing an excellent job Where's Autumn? She's probably out in the parking lot. There she is. I told her she had to take care of parking today, so that's why I thought maybe she was still out in the parking lot. Uh, Anna Petrullo, Lori Purnell, and then Karen Schaefer, who's one of our nurses. Lucy Shaw, who's been stuck at one of the registration tables up front. Debbie Smith, and um, Debbie Tartaglione, Charlene Vla Vlasnik, and Dr. Pat Weishart, who is the, Wishart. how did I mispronounce it? Wishart. Wishart. I know how to spell it, I just don't know how to pronounce them. And then Sally Tarhi, who is instrumental in getting a uh, grant for us that uh, we'll be talking about in a few minutes. And then, are we doing our physicians? Yes. Dr. Glenn Bollard, is he still here or did he leave? I think he had it out. Did he leave? Dr. Glenn Bollard, Brianne Estes, Dr. Ryan Evans, I know he's here, wave your hand. <laughs> Dr. Keniston, Dr. Kevin Kraling, Kelly Kraling, Dr. Amy Miles, Dr. Elizabeth Oven, and Dr. Singh. And Dr. Singh is just a new addition to volunteer for us. Um, and I wanted to mention Dr. Lashbrook, um, you don't volunteer per se, but you um, help provide us with a lot of um, lab studies at a re reduced cost for the clinic and our patients, and we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to take the time, thank everyone, it's, not, it's, it's all our volunteers. If it wasn't for the volunteers that we had at the clinic, we wouldn't be able to get any of the work done for our patients. Our patients are definitely so much appreciative of everything we've done for them, um, provided for them. We've, I mean, I know I've gotten to the point where I even cooked and showed what a serving size of spaghetti was for a patient in the diabetes clinic so that they understood this, you know, what a size. So, I mean, we've gone to all kinds of lengths to help our patients, and I think that's an important part of what our clinic does today. So. Our presentation. Yep. Now I would like to have Yvonne Cook from Highmark come up. Dr. Miles and Dr. Evans, could we have you come up forward to just to, you know. A lot of times we go to events and we have the really big check and it has the amount on it and everybody's excited to be around the check. And she said, we already spent the money already. So I, <laughs> it's all good. That's what we want. Uh, so again, my name is Javon Cook and I'm president of the Highmark Foundation. And I'm so excited to be here today because one of the things that as the president of the foundation, I love, love doing is supporting free clinics. They play such a pivotal role in our community and they are part of the continuum of care for people in this country. And I think it's extraordinary for you to list off so many volunteers and so many physicians that are tied to this 
to the clinic uh, is just incredible. And so I just want to thank all of you and I really want to thank the volunteers because it really does take the volunteers to really make the organization run. So I'm applauding all of the volunteers here today. And those who are not here today, thank you so much for the role that you play in helping so many people in our community. The other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, last year we issued a request for a proposal. There are about 38 free clinics in the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, we issued it to the free clinics and we said, apply apply for some funding from the Highmark Foundation uh, in these four categories. And Meadville applied in the area of chronic disease management and they were awarded a $25,000 gift, but they were one of several throughout the state that received uh, money from the Highmark Foundation. Our total in giving to the free clinics through that process was about $425,000. So I'm just really excited to be here today. <laughs> I'm excited about the phenomenal work that's being done and I'm so glad that you all are here to help celebrate 25 years of service to the community and to so many people in this community. And lastly, I will say during COVID, many people lost their jobs and they lost their health insurance. And you know where they showed up? Right here at a free clinic. So it's extraordinary work that they do. So continue to support them at the level. I'm so impressed by the number of organizations that are here, the number of people who are here. It's like middle of the day. I'm supposed to be in the office, but uh, so many people are here. So I'm so glad to be out of the office today and here with you today. So thank you all so very much. On behalf of the Highmark Foundation, thank you all so much for what you do. So proud of your work and thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Am I good? You're good. Go. <laughs> Senator Brooks was going to join us, but she but she was tied up. So, Christy, Christy Martone from Senator Brooks' office. Hi, I'm Christy Martone here on behalf of Senator Michelle Brooks. Um, she's sorry she couldn't attend today, but I get the pleasure of coming here and celebrating with you, and I appreciate all the hard work you've done and your volunteerism. Um, it's amazing and especially during times of COVID um, to know that you were here is probably such a comfort to everybody that was able to use the clinic so thank you for everything you do um, she did um, have a citation um, written from the Senate of Pennsylvania that goes into the Senate archives celebrating your 25 years um, I won't maybe bore you and read the whole citation, but I will read some of it. Um, and again, she's very sorry she couldn't be here, but um, I did get the pleasure of coming. So, whereas the Senate of Pennsylvania takes great pride in recognizing those medical facilities which through adherence to the highest standards of service contribute in a meaningful way toward a better and more productive society and whereas the Meadville area free clinic is celebrating the momentous occasion of its 25th anniversary and whereas founded in 1997 the Meadville area free clinic is dedicated to providing health care services completely free of charge to any community resident who has no health insurance Medicare or medical assistance Staffed by volunteer professionals who are licensed or certified in their field, the clinic operates under the guidance of an independent board of directors and serves approximately 1,000 patients annually. The Meadville Area Free Clinic has developed a strong reputation for the highest quality of service throughout its history. So I'm pleased to present you a citation from the Pennsylvania Senate. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everyone doing on this fine Thursday? Good, good, good. It's almost Friday, so can't be doing too bad. Um, so I saw on the bottom of that brochure that a cake cutting ceremony is coming up, so I won't keep you all too long. I'll make this short and sweet. Uh, my name is Michael Guido. I'm with Congressman Mike Kelly's office. Uh, unfortunately, the Congressman could not be here today, so in a similar manner, uh, I'm representing him here today. Um, I have to say, this entire presentation has been beautiful because what this clinic represents is the best our communities represent in America. 
as it was touched on um, by Yvonne, did I say the name right? Thank you. As it was touched on by Yvonne during the pandemic, a lot of people lost their jobs, they lost their health insurance, but this center was here, this clinic was here for people, not just in this area, but from all around, from, I take it, Erie County, Mercer County, Venango, Venango everybody. Um, and that really represents, I think, the best of what communities in America have to represent. And I know the congressman feels the same way. And they've been doing this for 25 years, and they've been doing an excellent job of it. That's why we're here today. That's why we're celebrating this. Um, so I was asked by the congressman to come here and present a congressional commendation, which is similar to a proclamation from the Senate, um, just recognizing the incredible work uh, that the clinic has done here over the last 25 years. It's a little briefer, so I will read this one. Uh, certificate of Special Congressional Recognition presented to the Meadville Area Free Clinic to honor their 25th anniversary and applaud their admirable efforts to improve the health and the well-being of the community. So it is my honor and privilege to present this. I would also like to recognize that the three county commissioners are here today and you're going to ask me for their names and I don't remember them. Can I have you guys, can you want to say a few words? No. Come on. Okay, the three com county commissioners are here. Uh, they don't want to say anything, but that's fine. Oh, the mayor. I'm sorry. I, I'm so... The mayor of Meadville is here. We are blessed with her presence, so thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm the mayor of Meadville. My name is Jamie Kinder. Um, I remember when the free clinic started, right? Um, and often we have weaponized healthcare, right? We have politicized healthcare um, when it, it truly is a human right. Right, and when um, we forget to step up, we then have to fall back on these beautiful volunteers, right, to give health care to people that wouldn't have it. So not only has this clinic been here 25 years, but it has saved lives and it's changed the world for many people, not just during COVID, right? Not just during when people lost their jobs, but every day for the last 25 years. Right? Um, so I, I just really want to thank everybody. Everybody that puts their time in, right? That isn't paid, but they care about the community. They care about people that live here, right? They want everyone here to have access to health care. Um, and I'm sorry that you guys have to do it this way. I'm sorry that it works this way. But I thank you so much for every single person that lives in this town that you guys service, okay? For every single second that you have to put in, right, to, to make a difference in their lives. And you are changing Meadville and you are changing the world that way and hopefully, eventually, we'll recognize the need for everyone to have health care. But until then, thank you again. And, and I appreciate your impact on Meadville and so does every single resident that, that lives here. So thank you much, I appreciate you guys. I think the important thing that I want everyone to remember is that it's, it's our volunteers, all our volunteers that come in and, and Diane is our office manager and she does get paid, she's a part-time office manager, but I know personally that she puts in more hours that, than what she says she does, and she volunteers and she buys a lot of stuff that she, for the offices, for the patients, and she's just a very important asset to our clinic. Um, I know she's texted me at 8, 9 o'clock and she's still in the office trying to do grant work and so forth. So I wanted, I mean, I just want to say Diane has done a wonderful job and she is definitely, uh, <laughs> she's back there with a knife threatening me, I think, to <laughs> move it along here. So let's go. Um, we have um, Krista Lundy here from the Meadville Area Chamber of Commerce with the cake cutting ceremony for our 25th anniversary. Thank you, Krista.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I greatly appreciate it. If I could have everyone's attention, even in the other room, if we could have your attention for just a moment, please. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate all of you being here, whether you are a vendor or a community person attending the event, supporting the event, whether you are a community partner who has given so much to the Meadville Free Clinic, whether you are a volunteer, all of us here are supporting a great, great organization in our community that has been around for 25 years and as Jamie mentioned, has changed lives. So they are going to continue to do that for 25 years plus. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Krista Lundy, the director of the chamber and we have many chamber member organizations that are business partners here as well. And we want to thank all of our commissioners and the city folks that are here and all of the people that give back to this organization. But the biggest thank you of all, I would like a huge round of applause for Diane Craven. I know it has been stated that she does so much for this organization, but most of us don't know what all she does. And if you are a volunteer or a partner, for the Mebo Free Clinic, please raise your hand because I bet most people in this room will have your hands raised. Big round of applause for all of these folks as well. So continue your conversations. Thank you so much. I just wanted a I just wanted to have Diane recognized and all of the volunteers, all of the business and community partners who make this organization what it is. And I don't think there's cake here for everyone, but I do know there's something here for everyone in a bit. But Diane, if you and your staff members, volunteers, whoever would like to come up, and I'll let you do the official cake cutting. Oh, I'm doing it. Okay, see, I, we're thrilled that we have been doing so many ribbon cuttings and grand openings and anniversary celebrations in our community with new businesses that are opening, with businesses that have been here for years and we're celebrating anniversaries such as this one but this one's pretty special. And I don't usually get to cut the cake, but I would love to have some assistance. And come on up, Dr. Amy Miles. I remember you when you were in Townville. So I remember when you were there, when I was there, I was a patient many years ago. This has come full circle. And now Dr. Evans is my doctor, so both of you has come full circle. I'll hold the mic. Okay. Here's a photo. To 25 more years and then some, everyone. Woo! I'll go ahead and cut it. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mr. Scott Yeager from the Penny Program. He's going to give a program talk about Penny and what Penny is. And I don't do a very good job of introducing that. So, <laughs> but I. But Scott Yeager, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, I do want to take a couple moments uh, just to thank everyone for attending today. This has to be, I, in my travels, I have a lot of opportunity to visit different parts of Pennsylvania and I work with a lot of communities, uh, not just in western Pennsylvania, northwestern Pennsylvania, north central Pennsylvania. I have to say, out of all the community fairs that I've attended so far um, in 2022, this has to be one of the best events uh, with regard to turnout, support. Um, I think it's I think it's one of the better events and. It comes back to something that's incredibly important, and that is the notion of what really makes a free clinic, what makes an event like this matter, and that's community. That are uh, basically that's individuals taking the time, the interest, and having the care enough to want to see their friends and neighbors in a better place. Um, one, of the, one of the fortunes that I have working for the Pennsylvania Health Insurance Exchange Authority is being able to visit so many different communities, seeing what 
stands out in those communities. And I can assure you that this event, Meadville, Pennsylvania itself and the community in this room are what matters most because ultimately they will see you and your friends and your neighbors through many, many dark days. Um, our program is very, very new. Unlike some of the programs that you have here uh, and the fact that we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the free clinic, which is phenomenal. I hope you enjoyed the cake. I didn't get any, but well, we'll get there. Um, I do want to point out that there are a lot of resources here that are incredibly important. And of those resources, Penny is but one player, okay? What I, what I would like to mention is that we have an incredibly good relationship with a lot of the community resources here and helping people get protected. Right now, within Crawford County, within Mercer County, and within Venango County, there are 17,700 uninsured people. That's 17,700 of our friends and neighbors, individuals who uh, quite honestly need services like those provided through the free clinic. For those individuals, if you know someone in the community who could benefit from the financial assistance that we have at Penny, the health insurance and dental insurance that we offer through Penny, please do not hesitate to refer them to us. That's what we're here for. Speaking of resources, I am going to say a special thank you to Lisa Cox. She is, without a doubt, she is one of the finest community resources in Northwestern Pennsylvania. Um, and yeah, you definitely applaud that because um, Lisa, whether, whether you realize it or not, individuals, and this is where everyone here at the free clinic, everyone in the community needs to appreciate just how significant their individual contribution can be. Those individual contributions matter. Those individual contributions move our friends, our neighbors to a better place. And that's what the free clinic is about. That's definitely what Lisa Cox is about. And that's really what Penny's about. As a new agency, we hope to not only protect individuals and families and their quality of life, we hope to eventually take that 17,700 uninsured here in this region and protect them. It's a simple goal, but as the mayor pointed out, the reason we need the free clinic, the reason we need agencies like Penny and so many others is because we don't have universal coverage, we don't have healthcare for all, but Penny's mission, Penny's goal, the goal of Lisa, the goal of so many of us, is to help people who are unprotected get the protection that they need, to get to that better place, and ultimately, when they rise, we rise as one. So thank you all so much. Thank you again, Lisa, for everything you do, and thank you all for what is absolutely one of the best events I've attended this year. Thank you.